Welcome to the B-Side Word. We are a group of friends from around the world where we share interesting articles weekly. Um, this is special this week because it's a uh, Christmas podcast. Christmas! I'm it is Christmas today. Woohoo! Merry Christmas! Woohoo! <laughs> so the voices Merry that you're hearing are M's. Yeah! CJ. Hello. Maxi. Merry Christmas. And Alexander. What's up? Oh, oh, oh. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> and as usual, Emma will introduce our first article. Okay, this is nice. Can I just stop? Wait, that wasn't very festive. But anyways, we'll continue. Okay, this is nice, but also sad. I'm thinking maybe we should have started with another one. But it is Christmas and this is a nice Christmassy thing. But it's, it's sad. Well, no, it's not sad, but... Alexander, it's your article. How's about you take it away? <laughs> okay. Um, so, as as per usual, I'm really clued up on my article. Um, <laughs> there's a good chance Emma probably has more knowledge, but we'll go for it anyway. <laughs> um, so, there was a 78 year old pensioner who was on uh, BBC BBC Breakfast Show in the morning. Yeah. No idea why he was on there. Don't he know. was on there and. It came out during this time he was on there that he was feeling lonely this Christmas. And depressed. Um, and and depressed. Um, you know, he's going to spend Christmas by himself. He hasn't even got a tree up, all this kind of stuff. So in the good spirit of Christmas, one of the hosts, Mr. Dan Walker, he took him and a few of the students from Oldham College and they went and visited the old man. And um, upon arrival, they arrived with a... A lovely Christmas tree that they took inside and decorated for him. And then I, 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 this bit was a bit weird that they did it this way. But then they went to the doorstep of the house and sang Christmas carols to him. So they opened the door, <laughs> sure went, went in, <laughs> decorated the tree, <laughs> then went back out. <laughs> Not sure why they went out for the Christmas carols. Well, we, we forgot a bit. We forgot a bit. <laughs> we'll meant to do that first. <laughs> why didn't they do that as though like knocking on the door then? Wish you a Merry Christmas. Uh, <laughs> that'd, have a big tree. that'd have a big tree, wouldn't it? <laughs> See, Jay's like... <laughs> Do you uh, they, they underestimated the weight of the tree? I they think got so. like, Oh, my God. Oh, we need to get this down, man. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Um, there are a lot of people I like that. I thought it was a lovely, right? a lovely Christmas story. That That is sweet. That's, oh, that's it is. cool. It's very lovely. It's pretty nice. I guess the sad part of it, like, like, like you were saying, Emma, is... That's not one person, right? There's a lot of people like that. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of people like that. Um, around 200,000 people um, in England, I think, uh, will be spending it alone this Christmas. That's according to the Age UK, which is a charity. Um, and I think so this this gentleman, Terence from Manchester, 78, he actually has been working for the charity or for, yeah, I think so, to try and help older people than him as well so he's befriended a 90 year old um woman who has dementia and they're gonna have christmas together but he was like he misses his mum. he used to say um you know every christmas he'd take his mum, you know a little pillowcase full of presents and then she said to him oh you know if you weren't here then i wouldn't get any presents at all from anybody and then he was like that's so true you don't even realize until you're in that situation when you're alone that nobody, yeah, you don't get any, like at Christmas, you wouldn't get presents from anyone if you're alone. It's so sad. It is. I know. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. My, um, my grandma often turned up with uh, with somebody at a Christmas party that we didn't know. Just oh, because really? they were alone on Christmas. Like it was very oh. normal for us to, at like our uh, family gatherings and stuff, there'll be someone that, my grandma knew as a friend, maybe, or uh, kind of half knew, because she she's the kind of person that just knows everybody in the community, right? She like, yeah, and she will have all the gossip about everyone. But so <laughs> when she finds that out that there's somebody sort of off, normally an older person who's like alone at Christmas, they'll just turn up and we'll we'll just talk to them like they're part of the family. That's nice. That is so That's nice. Really nice. That's nice yeah. yeah, that is so nice. That is so nice. Because you don't, yeah, you just don't think about it when you've like you just you know when you're around, lucky. yeah. You've got your family, whatever, kids or brothers, sisters, parents or whatever you've got around you. You don't even think about it too much. Aww. But okay, to mm. flip this sadness yeah. on its head. Let's flip this. I'm, just, I'm, flip I'm just this. saying this is like the saddest beginning of an article well, ever. There was a, a, a kind of a funny one, right? So courier drivers, yeah. 
<laughs> um, there was this, I don't know if you guys saw the video, this um, lady had left snacks and stuff for the courier driver. So she, re- she had a little um, thing on her porch on the step and it had like cans of Coke and chocolate bars and chips crisps or whatever and then it said you know FedEx and UPS and all these other career names help yourself you know ho 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 Merry Christmas type (laughs) thing (laughs) anyway this guy loved it so much watch this video actually guys let me see if you guys google Amazon driver dances from snacks or something like that and it'll come up with a video so the the uh, Amazon driver is Leaving the parcel on the doorstep. He notices the sign and some yummy, yummy, yummy snacks. (laughs) Yeah. I would have just did the whole thing. (laughs) Yummy, yummy (laughs) snacks. That Kathy Uma left out. Or Wama. Are we allowed to say her name? Yeah. She'd love it. Let's point out that this video has been viewed 14 million times. Oh, 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 he's doing some, oh he does a little jig. He's a, doing some two step. Two step. Actually, with a two step. Yeah, from the, from yeah, from the photo. Yeah, yeah. Does there anybody else dance for no reason <laughs> in situations like that? Oh, yeah. Emma's yeah. massive. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I do as well, but I was just like, I'm happy I've seen somebody else do this. <laughs> I feel a bit more. Uh, I rarely do it on a public street unless I'm in a very good mood. But that's awesome, man. Just like, just expressing Isn't that the nice? joy. Like, Isn't that so I nice? I got a cookie. I know. He was like, whoa, this is so nice. How nice is this? <laughs> It just uh, shows like the power of gestures as well, right? Because like if you get given that, if you buy yourself that or you get given a cookie like, hey. from like yeah. someone you expect to receive it from, it's just like, oh, I got a cookie. But when it's just like out of the blue, a stranger just openly says, you know what? I want to be kind to you. It's just, they just, some way, it just feels so much better, right? Like that gesture so is more So much than better. And it's so simple to do. Like so it's, simple. I know. I'm doing it. I already decided because I ordered a few parcels. But I was like, wait, we were in Australia, so chocolates would melt and the drinks would be warm. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll have to put him in an <laughs> yeah, esky or something. <laughs> think about what you choose. Someone yesterday complimented me on my socks. What? I know that sounds very random, but someone complimented my socks. And wait, were you sitting on a train or something where they could see them? No, I was, I was in a cafe and then they saw my socks and they said, I like your socks. <gasps> and I said, Thank you. You, you were sat down. <laughs> and I, I looked at their socks and was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Wait. they found that you were in the closet. <laughs> were you, uh, was this a guy or a girl? A guy. Oh, so yes, this is what I wonder. Yes, the still makes sense. Do guys... <laughs> to be honest, it, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't the first thing we said to each other. Like, uh, <laughs> we had a bit of a half discussion before of like, is it free? How are you, like, is it chair free? How are you doing kind of thing? And then sat down and then he said, I like your socks. I, I think like, he'd been mulling over that socks for a while. He just one wanted to minute warning work it in on there. On the Christmas special. One minute warning on the Christmas special. Thank you. <laughs> I, got a, um, I got a joke. I don't know if it's allowed to be said. It feels like completely against the spirit of this part of the episode. Oh, no. But it's about so, the article, yeah. right? One terrible joke coming up right now. One terrible joke coming up right now. Thank Please you. hide your but children. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> but it actually doesn't work when you know it's a joke as well. It's meant to be like. But okay, anyway, the thing was, disregard what I just said. Anybody out Please there disregard what I just said. Who's... This is not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. If anybody out there knows of anybody that's alone at Christmas, <laughs> can you please get them in touch with me because I've got too many people around and I would like to borrow their spare chairs. <laughs> <laughs> that really was a shit joke. <laughs> I didn't know how bad it was going to be until he said it. But I that was, was terrible. I thought you were actually just first of all giving a PSA before telling the joke, and then I realised. Well, that's why it shouldn't no. work as a joke when you say it's a joke. But it's cool if you thought it's a PSA anyway. That's exactly how it's meant to come across. To be honest with you, the funniest part of the joke was me. Oh, <laughs> CJ. <laughs> That was uh, that was yeah that was it was fairly decent. Um, I don't know what um this article. So we're giving um awareness to people being alone. 
Um, but people who are alone know they're alone. I understand. So but why are we bring awareness? To the people that don't know there's people alone. Yeah. But made alone for a reason. Mm, yeah, but not. They might be alone because their family died or their husband yeah. died. Yeah. It could be also because they're a jerk. That, that, or, that's or, or, or probably more of a not. That's what I mean. Uh, like, my question is do you know the stats of 200,000 people that were uh, are being alone? Mm-hmm. How many of them. I, I guess the Scrooges won't put their hand up that they're being alone, eh? Like, if you're a Scrooge. Yeah, but even if you are a Scrooge, you probably still don't want to be alone. There was probably someone that Scrooge loved. No, no, loved. if you're a Scrooge, you want to be alone. No, but Scrooge probably had a Mrs. Scrooge at one yeah. point. Oh. I don't know. Those stats uh. are negligible. Yeah. I still don't know. How do they figure these numbers out? And also, it was Age UK, right? So I'm guessing Age UK... <laughs> Merry Who Christmas! Do you have any guests? <laughs> no. One alone. <laughs> Next Did you door. say it was AGK? Merry Christmas, the, any guests? Uh, yeah, yeah. the AGK charity. Are they any good? Are they good people that uh, believe? Uh, my mum <laughs> donates to them quite a lot. But, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, they're, they're nationwide in the UK and they spend a lot of time helping the elderly. So, and I'm not, that's what I'm saying. I, they, I'd imagine, it, I'm not sure where they got their stats from, but if it comes from internally within them, like from their experiences, then they probably would have been people looking mm-hmm. to not be alone. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, we helped this many people that wanted to be ah, right. um, with someone. But if it was like, let's look at the stats, who lives alone? I don't think, I don't know how you figure that out. Oh, they mm. said just this headline, they go, there are 2.5 million older people with no one to turn to. Mm. That's sad. <sighs> this is too sad. This was supposed to be like a nice article. I know. I, mean, I, 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 was go- I was going to say, <laughs> this article's really dampened the whole mood. Oh. So, so all we're going to say is, if you have someone in your yeah. family, like long distance relatives or anything else, you or friends or anything you think might be alone on Christmas today, then just give them a call. Let them know you're thinking of them. If you can, invite them around or go see them. But at the very least, just let them know mm-hmm. you're thinking of them. Yeah. And then that one smile on their face might be enough to uh, <laughs> if you have a Christmas. Uh, yeah. If you have a neighbor that you know might be alone, just knock on the door with a mince pie. Yes. Yeah. We, yeah, definitely. Emma's good do with it. that. I'll leave that to Emma. <laughs> no, you do it this time, Dev. You do it. <laughs> Okay, guys, you know how we love our disguises on this show. So, Mm -hmm. another one and another one. So, a Brazilian guy. You can't say that. Uh Oh, we might get sued. (laughs) (laughs) A Brazilian man has been arrested for dressing up as his 60 year old (laughs) mum, right? So that he could pass a driving test for her. (laughs) <laughs> See, what, the hell? what the hell? So, so he literally <laughs> ha- hate or hate to shave, hate to shave. Is that his name? I hate to shave. Oh, <laughs> hate or shave. Oh, CJ. He, his mum kept failing. He wanted her to pass. Apparently, he did this without her knowledge. He put on like a dress, a blouse, lipstick. Um, got his hair did. Do we get a side by side comparison? Oh, I wish. What? And then, I don't know. I don't think oh, there is okay. one. And then, so he gets to the driving place. She didn't even realize at first. She's just like, oh, yeah, get in, whatever. He gets in. And then she's like, wait, what? Because <laughs> he's like, he's like. He's starting yelling out, hey, to shave. Hey, to shave. What are you doing here? Because he was just like, had big hands. And like, he was putting on a high-pitched voice. <laughs> it says unusually high pitched voice was suspicious, right? Hello! <laughs> like, who does you just you just say because I speak to a lot of people on the phone that I think is a man but it is a woman. So he could just be one of those, like, you know, hi or whatever. But he's like, oh hello. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh. Like this is Doubtfire be, sort of a that, Yeah. That has spun me out so many times. What? When, what? You, when you meet a big big guy, yeah. he talks like this. You're yeah, like, is it is it reg? Do you meet people on a regular? A bit, man. Quite yeah, a bit. I've met girls. I have a deep voice. Yeah, <laughs> and I met like these guys. Like, hi, I'm James. I'm here for the job interview. And, like, I can't hire you, mate, because I'm gonna be laughing my head off every time. I talk. Oh, <laughs> well, let's hope James is not listening because he'll know who he is. I've made up the name, by the way. <laughs> And I say, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Beckham's voice always threw me off. Yeah, Beckham. Like, when Beckham. I heard it. Yeah. And yeah. how about Wayne Rooney? 
What? I never heard him speak. He was a little high pitch, was it? Was it? His was more I just like very. Me. I think Gerard's the number one. Gerard, Gerard, the reason, Stevie, the reason Gerard. Gerard surprised me most though is because when you watch him play football, he's like the most aggressive. Like he's so aggressive and powerful on the pitch, but then when he talks in interviews, like his accent just throws me off. <laughs> How'd you go today, Stevie <laughs> Gerard? Yeah, I went out on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I scored me a crack. <laughs> that, was, that was a very bad, that was a bad yeah, <laughs> accent. <that's> terrible, dude. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Another disguise to add to the bank. We, we're, we're banking him up. But, but, like, really? What was this guy thinking? Well, I know. What was the end result? That he's an idiot. He didn't. <laughs> she realized <laughs> he was not who he said he was. She looked, she was like, can I have your ID? And she's like, oh, and he put out the, the, the fact party. that he got into the car is pretty impressive. I mean, yeah. how he got that far. <laughs> Apparently, he's a mechanic and like probably a really good driver. Imagine like he starts just like, <laughs> well, not that he's a racing car driver, but <laughs> that's like, how, that's how it goes. Brought <laughs> 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 well, his Formula One car with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. I just can't believe who did that child hate to save. <laughs> 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 CJ. Like, like, that's it. That's like, it. Like messed up names. If he was in our school, hey to shave, he would be still seeing the psychiatrist for all the sh- we, we picked on him. CJ, I didn't even um I didn't even pick it up until you started saying it a thousand times. <laughs> Did he hate to shave? <laughs> no, his name. What, what was what was his name actually? Hater shave. H e i t o r or hater. H e i t o r H-E-I-T-O-R, shave. S C H A Brazil. Oh, she doesn't like the Brazilian. CJ. CJ. Boom boom. Dev, this is your article, I think. Yeah, and it's about the, you know, the Great Ocean Garbage Patch guys. I think that's the actual name. I didn't know it was actually called that. But the Great Ocean Garbage Patch, the massive, massive, humongous. Island. Basic island of plastic in the middle of the ocean. We broke this news uh, probably about halfway, was it 20, yeah, episode 26 or something? a while back, a while back. Yeah, we didn't break the news. But, <laughs> I mean, we broke it. We, it we, we, we discussed it. Exclusive. <laughs> we were there first. We were there first, 50th, 100th, whatever. Well, the Ocean Cleanup Service, Cleanup Device rather, um, which is a non-profit created by a Dutch company, um, was for years planning and researching and trying to figure out how they can like whip up something to clean up this rubbish right yeah so they have a 2000 foot long floating tube that skims the surface of the water to catch the plastic rubbish um and they have just managed to actually successfully return from one of their rubbish catching missions um with about 60 bags one cubic meter each full of plastic trash, including everything from, it says, fishing nets, plastic bags, microplastics, which are like absolutely tiny. Um, so it's a success. They first thought about this and, and said they wanted to do something like this in 2012. So it's taken a quite a while, but they've done pretty good. I did that. That is pretty good. Yeah. But like hopefully more countries get involved because... Well, they said that they won't because apparently this area in the ocean is not owned by anyone. So what this guy is saying... But don't we all live here yeah. in the yeah, earth? So it's such a bad way of thinking, well, right, CJ? Yeah. The CEO, Boyan Slat, um, basically says that there's no money in it. Um, so no country is interested in... like there's, it, there's nothing for one single country to gain. Obviously, the world has something to gain, but one country, it's it's a big expense. So the way they're doing it is they're getting all this rubbish. They're then going to recycle or make sustainable products <coughs> from this rubbish. Um, and hopefully the fact that it's ocean plastic also is kind of like a bit gimmicky. So people will want to buy it because it's not just regular sustainable plastic. Like yeah. it's from the ocean. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's not from the so, ocean. No, it is. 
Well, no, <laughs> it's not. <The> <laughs> but it ended make, up there. <laughs> the ocean didn't make plastic. And then, so he's going to sell <clears> it <throat> and then, but create stuff that isn't able to end back up in the ocean. So he's not sort of having that same problem. And then 100% of the profits from selling those products is going to go back into the cleanup missions. Mm. I think everyone should support them. I yeah, know. I reckon too. It's a, it's a good thing. You can good, go on their website and course. donate. They've got some big, uh, big backers behind them. Oh, do they? I'm um, like helping them out. It says if you want to, they don't, um, they don't, ha- they don't know exactly what they're going to create yet, but you can put $50 down to be on the sort of the, the wait list, I guess, for, for when they do start producing. Can I ask, I know this might be a stupid question, but what's a, what's a non-for-profit? They're not, they don't make profit. But like, okay, so they don't make profit, but they have big yes. backers. Yes, because they still have to pay the workers. Yeah, I understand, but like, so all the money has to go back into it, so they don't, they don't. There's no profit being taken from it. Yeah, like no one's taking an ink. Oh, usually most income, of them don't take like, an income. Hey, most of them don't uh, take an no, income. No, that's not. No, that's not true. Yeah, a lot of them. Tibet but most incomes. people, you can have a non-profit where every single person gets an income. Yeah. Oh, where yeah, every they'll, person they'll, they'll have yeah. incomes. You, you, yeah, you, you can have non-profits that do that. You have need scientists to create the um stuff that you're creating. You need that people to try to plan how they're going to recycle. Yeah, so plan. like you can be like a CEO of a non for profit, but still make like uh, like oh, yeah. 200,000. Yeah. That's Even more. There's some like CEOs that million. work for charity to make a lot of money and get a lot of stick for it. But um, yeah, but there's the a lot point, of volunteers. The well. A non profit has to have, and it changes country to country, but something which a non profit has to have, which a normal corporation doesn't, is a board which um, gets like, they have like uh, reviews from an external body, and then the board has to make. You have to have decisions of people that work for the company and or the nonprofit, and people externally come together and make decisions on like how you're going to spend money and stuff. Like that has to be put in place in a ethical way, judged by an independent body. Huh. But the but you can get paid a lot of money, but then obviously if you're getting paid a lot and it comes out, then you, your nonprofit probably isn't going to be a uh, the best. But not oh, many yeah. people get into nonprofits to make money, money, although you can if you want to. It is possible. Okay. Huh. I just I just wanted to know. See, mate, know. it wasn't a stupid question. Yeah. Like hmm. a friend of mine's going to start her own non-profit, possibly. She's kind of been pushing that direction. Um, but she won't be making an income. She's not going to be paying herself. Not until... It starts making money. Yeah. Such a time where... We well, can't start making money. No, no. When I say making money, <coughs> making money, enough, um, she gets enough money, income coming in, but she can actually give herself a wage. Yeah, I'm, like I thought, I thought well, what Mac, with Mac with what Max is saying, you don't make it's not a service or a product. You're not making money off it. I thought it's just benefactors giving you money. Is that right, or do, can you make money? No, it depends on the 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 one called Charity Water was uh more like they've done a model which is what you're saying, which is any product they sell or any donation you give goes directly to uh the cause the itself, cause. and oh, they get okay. they. They pay all of their employees via big backers, but normally, like Oxfam and like, have you heard Oxfam? Like UNICEF, yeah. mm. you would give them donations, yeah. and then you go on their website and it will show you like thirty percent of donations go towards paying employees and staff, sixty percent make it to the cause, and every single non-profit or charity, at least in the UK, would have like a uh, ratio, which says like it's like say 0. 0.5 means fifty percent of donations go to directly to the cause, and fifty percent goes to operations. So you can oh, look okay. them up and say what is their you know, what is there? I'm not sure what the stat is, but there's for Charity Water, I think that's what they're called, Charity Water, um, who provide water for places where they don't normally have access to water. Yeah. Um, they have like a one, they have the perfect score. Like every single thing you donate goes directly to them. Wow. But, 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 but with these guys here, if they're making a profit, who cares? They're cleaning up the oceans. They're doing something positive for the world. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, no I don't I'm, care. Not, I'm not worried about it. I was just trying to find the definition of oh. non for profit. But like, like what upsets me the most is the world leaders, they all should be fired. Well, Siege, all right. So just a simple, <laughs> CJ just, wants to be the just world simple, leader. Just a leader. simple question, the right? one. <laughs> if, you, if you're walking down the street, right, and then you see a, a, a packet or a, what, a rubbish on the, in, the, in the gutter, do you pick it up? No. Why? Because I don't know what's touched that rubbish. <laughs> or it's not yours? No, no. It's basic fact. I don't know what's on the rubbish. Is that all that's stopping you? Yeah. So if you wore rubber gloves, would you pick it up? Couldn't bother me as much. The, what I'm saying is that people people are saying that this is not my land. Why should I pick up this rubbish? 
You know what I mean? Like but the rubbish is coming from your land, and you're causing the issue. I understand, but like, so why wouldn't you pick up the rubbish in the gutter? Like, I'm just trying to show you a different. Okay, if I threw the rubbish in the gutter, yep, you'd pick it up. That's my rubbish. I should pick it up. Yep, correct. This is their rubbish. Whose rubbish? The government's. Which government? But it's from all of them. Sir, yeah. All of them. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm sure it's some American rubbish, <laughs> some English rubbish, some Australian rubbish. Yeah. All there, right? But the, yeah. What Dev's argument, uh, Dev's argument um, is exactly what the Americans are using because most plastics that end in the ocean nowadays comes from like third world countries, like yeah. trans- countries that are struggling because they just don't have the the infrastructure to stop it as well and they also when you're that poor you just don't care about plastic in the ocean you care about feeding your kids right yeah they're the ones that don't they tend to come from poor countries at the moment that's where most of plastic's coming from so america a country that can clearly afford to do it but they're like why would we clean it up when 80 percent of it is coming from like these type of countries or for their case 95 percent of it well some of this plastic which is the argument years that we're having so originally the plastic would probably came from them yeah, for the first uh, and Possibly. often it will be come from products that they're selling as well. So then it's like, yeah. well, you should have cleaned up. To be honest with you, I wish there was a way they could trace where this came from and double <laughs> back on the country that freaking every put every it in. every plastic has a marker, even One if it's a mi- even if it's a micro like, micro plastic. Uh, like, I wish this charity would have a plane and go. You know what? Yeah, I'll teach you a lesson. Hey, America, this is all your crap. And just dump it on them. <laughs> <laughs> England, Always blame this America. Is yours. Eh? <laughs> Australia, this is yours. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so there you go. That's uh, pretty cool. It is pretty cool. I like this kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, do you... I remember reading about this like years ago when he was just in the concept phase and they hadn't even built the first one thinking like, does this stuff even work? And then yeah. when did this happen? When did they first get their first one 2000... back? 2000... Oh, uh, it just happened just recently, happened. I think. Just happened recently. Like within the week? Like uh, I think Ooh, so. Because I saw it on look. Twitter. Because I'm massive on Twitter now. I'm like <laughs> such a Twitter head. What's your what's your uh, what's your handle? Uh, you call at it a handle? What's your word? tag? Uh, at the B side word. word. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> His handle is Tweetmaster sixty eight. <laughs> it is. I give you uh, Twitter is such information overload. That is ridiculous amount the amount of information that comes straight at you. You're like, oh man, what the freak? Who reads all this shit? And then, and like my my is uh my what I'm seeing is very nichey as well. And then I try to like look up what's trending worldwide, and I'm like, oh man, this is too much. Too much. This is way too much. Uh, okay, this- did anyone read what Donald Trump said about the little girl? Because I I missed that. Gre- Gretna. Gre- Gretel. Yeah. Greta. 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 Yeah. What well, what happened? Because I've, uh, I've, I've been busy at work. I, I only saw headlines. And, I didn't and, see. And I didn't, I, just, and I didn't get the opportunity. You call her ridiculous and... Oh, she should... Um, something about management. her being ridiculous and she should go out and like chill and watch a movie with her friend. She like, said something about... He said something about anger management or something. He does realise she's a child, right? Oh, yeah. He's like she needs to work on her anger... Oh, she, needs to, she needs to work on her anger management. She should chill out and go watch an old-fashioned yeah. movie with a friend or something like that. So she tw- <laughs> she changed her Twitter bio Again. to like, Greta Thunberg... <laughs> Uh, a chilled out she's like a chill no she's like um Greta Thunberg or whatever her name is um I you know just a young person working on my anger management and <laughs> just going to catch a movie with my friends <laughs> she's done that twice to him it's now amazing. I love her oh, uh this was released two days ago this article so it doesn't exactly say when but I'm pretty sure it's it is amazing. recent that's been like half a decade of Can planning we- and yeah. it's finally yeah. working that's yeah. good. J- j- just on a smaller scale in the Australia, <laughs> like on the on Australia, is it Australia Day? They have Clean Up Australia. Oh yeah. Uh, Maybe we should yeah. be part of that. We wear we wear um, B side wood um, t shirts and we'll go out there. It would be good if we had some. What? <laughs> some B side word. I thought merch. you meant some gloves. I can get some gloves. <laughs> <laughs> This week on Max Facts. Max Facts, Merry Christmas. Max Facts, Merry Christmas. Max Facts, Merry Christmas. Max Facts. <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so today we have a Christmas fact, of course, because it is Christmas Day. Woo! Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, in Japan, they traditionally eat some type of food which you probably wouldn't expect on Christmas Day. 
What do you guys think it is? Oh, go on. Starfish. <laughs> That's a, a really good one. Japanese people aren't really Christian. Pork. Pork. I, I reckon it's some kind of like pork tongue. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Can we just roll that <laughs> yeah, back? Why, why? How is he <laughs> saying Japanese people aren't Christian immediately trigger both yeah, of your why brains? Pork? Two different people to say pork. Why? <laughs> that was weird. Yeah, that was really weird. <laughs> There has to be like Those Christians eat pork. There's got to be some logic behind why you said pork. Two people. Do you, do you know what it was? I what? think I'm gonna I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna take a stab at this. I think both of their brains went Christian religion. Yeah, religion not allowed. Pork. Pork. Muslim. Yeah. yeah. Pork. That's that's a not allowed food. <laughs> no, no. We're just gonna associate that with something. Yeah. Now My have. brain was thinking. Does Deja kind of eat meat? Yeah, that's Friday. Yeah, and that's not pork. But you, what? Uh, what? Because <laughs> you can still eat chicken and fish on Fridays. They're not allowed to eat meat on Fridays. Oh, you can eat fish though. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> so, okay. anyway, well, can I change my guess then? Were you right? Um. Wait, what were the answers so far? We've got two porks, <laughs> starfish, two porkies, blowfish, starfish. Blowfish. No, I'm changing it. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go blood. dog. What? Dog? Dog. They're not Chinese. Wow. They're Japanese. That's that's racist. Yeah. Ferret. <laughs> anyway, the answer is chicken, but Chick. that's boring answer. The answer really is they eat KFC for Christmas dinner. What? Original recipe? So or basically, <laughs> because Japanese didn't celebrate Christmas and they don't care about Christmas, back in 1947, KFC ran a big marketing campaign to <laughs> um, <laughs> at like the sort of the non non Japanese people for them to say you don't have turkey in Japan. They just don't eat that there. But chicken's the closest thing you can have. So, like, make KFC your Christmas dinner. And now Japanese people just do that. They're like, okay, let's go get a KFC on a, on huh. a Christmas day. That's some good uh, advertising. Although, I'd like to get that verified from a, a just, someone that lives in Japan. But that's uh, what this website uh, says. I like, quite intelligent. I says. like that. Yeah. Imagine, imagine if our countries did something like that. We're like, oh, we don't celebrate the holiday. Let's just all go get McDonald's instead. <laughs> <sighs> All right, <laughs> just an extra day out of your well, year to, well, to do we, something. Well, we do um, Black Friday's one, isn't it? Which the whole world just adopted. Yeah, as, let's all just take part in this. Hall Halloween's a bit different though. Mm. There's a lot of people that just adopt things, which are I know it's a bit different, but there's a lot of people that adopt holiday just because it sounds fun. Yeah, like sounds fun to KFC on the 25th. It probably doesn't. It's Christmas, like that's like us saying it's an Eid. You know, Saturday. it's a day, but you just don't care. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, my my mate um likes to go partying, so he made up uh he made a holiday up, Happy Eifus, and I said, bro, we're not selling, we're not celebrating end of year sale, we're not <laughs> we're not doing it, because they've got them in the ads <laughs> over here. Eifus, he just wants to set up. <laughs> he just wants to go, let's go out for drinks. Okay, man, that's not even a thing. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Because <laughs> they've got the EFS sales all the yeah. time. And he goes, we're going to celebrate the sales. I'm like, no, man, I'm not going to the pub for that. I'm going home. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> so this article is perhaps the bizarrest one in a while. Uh, China. They have. Again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> They could be, well, they are developing the first underwater civilization or colony that will be entirely run by artificial intelligence. Did they call it Atlantis? Not just underwater, run by artificial intelligence. Like, mm, like that's an, exactly. That is, that's like some proper sci-fi stuff. That is. This is some sci-fi stuff. Maxi? So this is called the uh, Hades yeah, Project. I think so. Yeah. This one? The Hades Project. Yeah, that's one. And this looks, I mean, it just looks like something from a movie. It looks cool. It has uh, structures underneath the sea of varying shapes. Uh, what looks to be <laughs> like underwater UFOs. Could this be uh, a thing though? Is this, uh, would you uh, live underwater? Yeah, but the whole plastic it thing in my thin. window will be upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, what were you saying, Maxi? 
it made me think colonizing the sea would probably be easier than colonizing space. Mars. Yeah. Yeah. That's true, well, but where does everything Yeah, I I say I just happened to watch a video uh, the other day with Neil deGrasse Tyson explaining exactly what would have to happen for us to colonize Mars. A million percent would be easier to colonize this thing. Oh, <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we're not even close to being able like, to colonize All Mars. the resources you need is just like a trip up onto the riverbank. If you, if you colonize yeah. a river, yeah. which would be pretty low, low budget, but. I'll just walk up on the beach, the river. grab some coconuts, bring it back down. You, you know what would be funny? <laughs> we all move into the sea, and then we start polluting the top. <laughs> oh gosh! The and then polluted. when you when you look up, you know what it is. When you pop your head out, you're like, oh my god, that's, that's a lot of plastic. <laughs> what do you think we'd look like? So, I was okay. Uh, my uh, article's slightly wrong because it's not like a massive color. It's it's a research base, but I feel like if this research base is successful, then they might actually start taking over the sea um this is so like so i kind of uh, i kind of skipped a bit what are you saying alexander there's, there's a video i watched on twitter i think a couple of days ago of this it was just like this you know like a uh, where cute people go cliff jumping into the water yeah it was a guy who was in like that sort of uh break in off the side you know, like in one of those gaps. Yeah. Mm. I, don't know, I don't know how to explain yeah. it. Like in the water. So he was in the water swimming, but he, he just had like his camera 50 50 in and out of the water. Yeah, yeah. It was like this ridiculously clear water. Mm. Um, and you could just see really far down. And like that made me really uncomfortable because I don't know what's in water. Mm -hmm. So the idea of living underwater, I just, I just don't think. We're we're meant to go in places we're not meant to, like if we can't survive the yeah, <laughs> that is the think. wisest quote I've ever heard you say, Alex. <laughs> Can we put that on a t shirt? <laughs> Could I don't think you're meant to go places we're not we're meant not to meant to be Can we go into space? Yeah. Did you get where I'm coming yeah, from though? Like I I just feel yeah. like Like we've we've not even explored the oceans. Why are we trying to live in them? Like nah, no. I'm good. <laughs> So but, you can see that song I mean, under the sea, under the sea, <laughs> <laughs> under the yeah. sea. Yeah, but soon, like it becomes so normal, we'll be singing over the sea as if that's the novelty. Oh. novelty uh... <laughs> it's it's one of those things. It's like we, I think we've we've gotten to the arrogance of thinking that we can out survive anything in any oh, arena. No but I think that we need to just come bring it back to no we can just out survive yeah. things on land at the moment yeah i'm not sure we, we can out survive things on land anymore well the <laughs> I um think done the, win. the president <laughs> yeah i think i think evidence is suggesting we're not doing too well on that front either no. <laughs> maybe we'll try let's try see for a while <laughs> <laughs> why land repairs itself <laughs> <laughs> oh how about if we do that oh no no, no. well the president <laughs> who is we all she under the sea. jinping <laughs> said there is no road in the deep sea we do not need to chase we are the road that's what the chinese they're they're saying that basically can you say that again there is no road yeah. in the deep sea we do not need to chase we are the road so we we create our own that's a double negative yeah there's no road we do not need to chase so that means we chase they will be chasing any road they get their hands on <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Want he wants to march into the ocean to accelerate the build-up of maritime power and he has selected a place which he thinks will be good to do this underwater uh, research base which is under the in the manila off manila yeah i think um through the manila trench because it's the only location uh in their waters that exceeds five thousand um meters depth in the south china sea wow. oh so, so, all right i've got a question yes. for you. going down first yeah <laughs> if Imagine we're in a world where we've colonized Mars. Yeah. yeah. Like we have the ability to live there. Yeah. And we've now colonized the ocean. Yeah. We have the ability to live there. But when you go, you can't come back from either. Oh, that's what's Which happening. Which one would you go for? What the oh. hell? Okay, if I go in the water, can my family come visit <laughs> me? If you sounded like really stressful. <laughs> <laughs> under the sea. Under the sea. <laughs> I think Mars. You know why it's horrible, Alexander? I tell you why. Because I watched a movie <laughs> called, you know, the one with Matt Damon, and he gets shrunk. Oh yeah, Matt Damon. Yeah. He gets shrunk down. Yeah. Right. 
he gets shrunk. For anyone that hasn't watched the movie, I'm going to do a spoiler. He gets he goes through the process, right? And he says goodbye to his wife. And he goes through the doors. Oh, yeah. And he gets shrunk down, right? Then he gets a phone call seven days later that his wife backed out of it. Right? Backed out of what? About uh, getting shrunk. Oh, so she he, was meant to as well. Yes. Yeah, and he's living in this world where he's a miniature version of himself by himself in this whole new world. And I'm like, that's hot. I don't know why. I just felt like you go into the scene, you can't come back. You're like, oh, man, I'm going to miss my family. Oh, but wait, if they were coming with you. Okay, you like, choose? yeah, like this, this I don't know. Take your family I just, it's you. a big, big. I would 100% choose to see over Mars. Mm. I, I just like to see. Why? You can't see on Mars, on Mars, but you can see under the sea. <laughs> <laughs> under the CJ, sea. CJ's reasoning is so you can sing the song. <laughs> <laughs> why am I, why are you under the sea, Max? <laughs> like Mars is pretty um what's the word? Like Far away. it's pretty much <laughs> the same everywhere, right? From what I know about Mars. You might get some big hills, but it's just brown dust everywhere. So you have to build buildings. You can't go outside, you have to wear a spacesuit, which is the same as in the water, you can't go outside. But if I'm gonna wear a spacesuit, it'd be nice to be able to move in three dimensions instead of just two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can fish for food. Is it called fishing or hunting if you live under the water? <laughs> <laughs> hunting. Oh, when you catch birds, you're airing. <laughs> you're what? birding. Airing. Sorry, birding. <laughs> no one no one shoots a, a bird and says, I've aired the bird. No, you don't. You go, I'm birding though. Would you say you're birding? Do you say I'm, you say I'm hunting? Yeah, but he's saying fishing. But if we lived in the water. Fishing. Or birding. Oh, 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 and then you like get a bird. Yeah, you're oh, birding you. then. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess. But you'd like have to have a, a generic from term for all land animals. Like we have a generic term I'm for cowing. all oh. water animals. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. Hey? We have a generic name for all this like... Oh, man. It's... Like what? Getting any living thing out of the water is fishing. Huh. Because if you like fish <laughs> for a dolphin was not a fish or a whale... Do they call whale fishing? What was that called? Mm. Oh, actually, whaling. You go no, crabbing, it's called whaling. Yeah, isn't oh, you go whaling? crabbing. You go crabbing. We got prawning. Prawning. But it's actually, not called dolphining. Because we're not meant to catch dolphins. Or sharking. <laughs> no, does anybody do dolphining? <laughs> because sh- sharks are trying to catch you. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, if you Darkin. want to find out more about what they are planning with their AI underwater futuristic stuff, then we will put the article in One the minute warning. Comments. Huh. <laughs> nice. Under the but scene. I, this is like, for me, this seems like some um, like evil scientist type stuff. <laughs> it does. Do you know when like they <laughs> have like this secret lab underwater and they're developing stuff? But there's actually lots of things which work better underwater. Like Microsoft have just put, are putting their data centers underwater because they don't need to spend what? so much energy on cooling them down. Oh, wow. Because the water just sucks the heat, heat away from it. Ooh. Just, oh, just wow. to put you on that sounds futuristic, whatever thing, just for fun, because I saw this. Middle Eastern nation. I, I haven't clicked on the article yet um, to tell you which nation, but Middle Eastern nation is the first to buy a drone armed with a machine gun. Just so you oh. know. Just, just so you're aware of what's going on. <laughs> what's a drone going to do when I'm underwater? I will drone that drone. I'll go droning. <laughs> I'll drown the drone. Oh, turkey. And sink turkey to under the, the sea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. CJ. Um, um, again, with that, uh, another buy or segue. Did you hear Twitter Twitter CEO is going to move to Africa and live there for six months? Oh. I heard that, yeah. No. No. <laughs> yeah, he's moving there. Why? Because like, um, there's potential there, I think. He says that's the future. That's the future. There was one, I think it was one of the, someone someone up in Google, high up in Google or something, is like secretly trying to cure the flu. Oh, secretly why secretly? Trying to cl- cure the flu. Oh, here we go. The co-founder of Google is quietly trying to cure the flu. Larry Page. Quietly yeah, and secretly. It's, it's, probably, two different... it's probably causing, um, like Google, it's probably costing him a lot of money. So if you can cure the flu and they ring up and they say, oh, I've got the flu. No, you don't. I've got the cure. Come in. I'll give you an injection. <laughs> you don't give me that bullshit. You, you've been Googled. 
love it. I've got diarrhea. Nah, I got a, I got a, I got a antidote for that too. Come in. Well, they want to stop people googling the flu. Is what you're saying? They're wasting their no. The Google employees, and like employees, calling sick. It, he's got the cure. Sick. Oh, yeah, stop them calling you. sick. <laughs> They're that powerful. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you haven't got the flu. Come in. Aaron Brazil's gonna work at Carpet Tunnel, so you keep typing, <laughs> buying stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's because Facebook, Facebook, um, there was a, uh, there was a third world countries that didn't have the internet. So they put the internet there so they could use Facebook. Did you hear about this? I didn't, I just heard about it like this okay. morning. And no, honestly, yeah. some of these for, uh, third world yeah. countries, don't they need something besides the internet? Like maybe food, water, housing. Yeah, but information is power. That doesn't yeah, help. Yeah, but, the, mm. but unless you got. Not a, Facebook though. <laughs> actual electricity to run the Facebook. Wouldn't that be a bit more beneficial? I think they put the infrastructure in so they could use Facebook. I think you've got a... Uh, a lot of people in Africa have a phone okay, but don't have access to the internet and have access to electricity but don't have access to the internet. Like oh, The internet is a, a reasonable step from electricity. Is it? Oh, um, there you go. I didn't know that. Because I've never been to Africa but like those UNICEF ads... <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. That's what, what's, we what's see what Africa as UNICEF ads, yeah. but Africa's more than a lot more than UNICEF ads. <laughs> yeah, if you <laughs> there's like got, super yeah. rich p- black people in Africa doing really really well, then there's super poor people, and there's a spectrum in between. I'm, and I'm, there's I'm, a I'm, big part of that spectrum in between where they have electricity, they have phones, but they struggle to get any internet. So they uh, say, you know what, I'm going to send a big drone. And I haven't controlled enough people in the world with my propaganda on Facebook. There's a massive market in Africa. <laughs> I just put, give them that access and only access to us month. and we'll control them too. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it went something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Some, don't quote me, but something along the <laughs> <laughs> And I did the big <laughs> All right, everyone, thanks for watching this week's episode of the B-Side Word. Make sure if you enjoyed it to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe and drop us your thoughts in the comments down below. Hit the bell, hit the bell. Hit the bell, hit the bell. bell.